Hello and welcome back to another video in the series where I attempt to play all of the Zelda games for the first time ever before Tears of the Kingdom comes out. And before I start, I just want to ask your opinion on something. Completing these games is taking a lot longer than I thought and I'm not convinced that I'll even be able to get through half of the games. So I'm just wondering whether you think it's worth just going straight to Breath of the Wild after finishing Skyward Sword and trying to get as much of that done as possible and then playing Tears of the Kingdom when it comes out? Or do I just ignore the FOMO of playing the game on release date? and just enjoy playing all of the games beforehand, not rushing them all, trying to 100% complete them all. Because I can't really decide what to do. I kind of want to savour the games and not rush through them all just to try and get them all done before May 12th. But I really, really want to play it as soon as it comes out. But yeah, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on that. And we'll get straight into the video. So in this video, we've arrived at Elden Volcano. And this is going to be a little walkthrough on how to get to the boss level. So we're going to start by heading left and getting the goddess cube. <laughs> and then heading straight on up to meet these two little guys. Carry on straight up and then you can head right to get some rupees. But just be aware that the lava goes up and down. I was not aware of this and it burnt me. And then you can head straight on back over to the main path. Throw some bombs at these little boulder formations, um, just be aware that they put that notice at the start of the game about wearing a wrist strap for a reason. I thought it was more responsible than that, um, didn't have them on and I did throw the um, Joy-Cons a couple of times by accident.
this definitely took some getting used to for me. I realised the trick was to get the angle right so there's no flame and then you can bomb it. Head on up here. Get rid of the googlies. Pop some bombs into these skulls. And then pop on over the skeleton bridge. If you have a look around you'll find some huts. Now I must have missed the part in the game where they told me this because I didn't know it but if you sit down it will actually replenish your hearts for you. Then you'll also find a little heart piece and a goddess cube. <laughs> Near this area you'll also find a little hole where you can bomb and it'll take you to a treasure box with some rupees and you'll find some Elden rollers in there as well. It took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure out that you need to roll the bomb across the bridge so that you can hit that spot. I honestly don't know what I would do without game guides online. When you're free falling down the volcano, you want to try and land on a ledge where the chest is. If you miss, you can always just hop back on this ledge and get taken back up to the top. And then you can try again. It's definitely worth it because you'll get some Elden ore. Head on through to this section and say hello to this fella. And then if you go through and defeat all these little goblins. He'll be completely and utterly impressed and give you some claws. Use these to dig. I'm gonna get up there, head straight forward, and you'll come across a goddess plume. You can add this to your collection. Head on up the ladders, defeat all the goblins, and slide down these little sand sides. Head back on off and turn right instead and then you can help this little guy, he's completely useless.
But you basically just want to pop bombs into all of these little holes. Some of them have loads of rupees, some have hearts. And if you're like me, accidentally bore a hole in the wall and you'll find a chest with a whopping silver rupee. Go through and head on up to the top of the volcano. Where you'll meet Zank. The bridge will magically join itself for you. Further on up and you'll come across this, head on up and back down again, take a break, try again, bomb the boulder below, slide down, catch some bugs and then sprint all the way to the top. Take out all the goblins. Chuck a bomb on this, whatever it's called, that'll fall down. Cross on over, up the vines, and sprint all the way up to the top to the temple. Now I don't know what happened to the audio in this bit because this is all the same clip but after the conversation with Fi the audio got very juddery and I don't know why. If anyone knows why or has any idea please do let me know because most of this was just all one clip so I only did it in certain sections so nothing was changed but please bear with because it does go back to normal. So the first one's just left from the front of the temple and if you go further left you'll come across this. Find the second one. Third one's just on this ledge. Whee. 
So if we take a left, grab these rupees, head on over these buildings and bomb that little whatever it's called. That'll drain. You just need to head on through. Try and bomb that opening. And that's where the fourth one will be. Go back and take a right this time and land on this little ledge here. Hop on over these airstreams. And that's where you find your last one. Head all the way back to the temple. On the way you can also find this mini game. I gave it a go, but it's a bit of luck and I didn't win any money, so I didn't think it was worth it. You can join me in the next episode where I adventure through the temple and defeat the boss. And if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe so that you can be kept up to date with the series. As always, I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!